Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Path of Wildness meditation for... Why do I always have such a hard time remembering the date? It doesn't say. I think it's the uh, 25th or 26th day of July 2016. And good morning to you. Uh, the Path of Wildness is a uh, walk of uh, equanimity, bal a balanced movement through life, uh, tempering the emotional responses through uh, the application of reason and uh, the governance of, uh, of our emotions. This does not mean the suppression of emotions. This simply means the uh, mature and adult management of these and also uh, the management of our uh, of our, I thought that was a hawk chasing something. The management of our appetites, which are just simply another form of emotion, so uh, of an indulgence. So there are three uh, objectives and seven principles on the path. The three objectives are one, the uh, development and maintenance of good life principles. You're welcome to borrow mine or uh, create your own. I highly recommend the latter, at least uh, to vet, uh, vet out the principles that. Uh, you admire in life and find the uh, good supporting reasons for those. And uh, the next is to uh, cultivate good emotional reactions, as I said before. And then third, to uh, perform good actions in accordance with the principles on which you base your life. So really, the path of wildness is, is a framework for the execution of the principles that you develop. And unlike uh, dogmatic systems which uh, prescribe principles. I really do, as a, to restate what I said a moment ago, I really do recommend uh, developing your principles uh, from, uh, as much as you possibly can on your own. At least uh, uh, make sure that they uh, jibe with the uh, framework that, the, the, that you have in terms of your own, your own sense of right and wrong. Some people think that 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 might be sound rather subjective, that you can come up with your own morals in that way, but it's really not if we look at what the definition of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of what virtue, of what virtue is. And um, the fact that, that goodness can in fact be an objective thing. If we, if we define goodness as uh, an improvement in the welfare of, uh, of the group, while respecting the rights of individuals. That basically uh, leads us to conclusions that are, are uh, pretty darn straightforward and um, not too subject to, in, not really subject to interpretation very much. So I kind of diverge, let me get back on the path. He has seven uh, principles. The first is the principle of, uh, the atom well, I, call it, I call it the atomic principle, but I always start off by saying it's the principle of. You can't say the principle of the atomic principle. It's the atomic principle. Which is simply, simply put, means that uh, the universe is made of bits and pieces that are flowing and changing and altering through time, uh, and that we too are part of that, part of that, and that what we are will uh, change and transform and become something else. What we were yesterday is something else today, and will be something else yet again tomorrow, and uh, very soon, very very soon, no more whatsoever. That's good because it helps to um, motivate us to live in a more earnest fashion and to uh, keep it to not be surprised when change does unfold. The second principle is the uh, principle of nature. Everything has a particular nature in the world, including our species. That's my uh, boy band. Uh, Ways navigation app. <laughs> so everything has a particular nature, including um, including uh, our species and individuals. So this, the nature of humanity is to uh, use the, the, our natural uh, capacity. You know, lions have claws and teeth, and porpoise have fins and sonar, and humans have uh, uh, big brains. We don't have claws, teeth, sonar, or anything else. Like that, but we do have big brains that we can use to uh, figure out the world, and um, that is to solve problems and to uh, to uh, just struggling to get on the freeway here. Got to focus. 
we use our big brains to uh, solve problems, understand the world, and uh, improve the condition of our species, and hopefully the rest of the world in the process, and not be a bane on the, uh, on the planet. Individuals have their own nature as well, which is more akin to uh, their natural inclination. You know, maybe someone's a fast runner, or a fast thinker, or a good talker, or whatever, an artist, or whatever the case may be. But also, uh, uh, some of these traits may be born, born, born with these traits. Some of them may be developed through uh, training and uh, time. And someone might be a good, uh, uh, um, you know, the, very good, very skilled at, at, at the law, which is something that come, may come from a rigorous study of the law and uh, argumentation. So what I simply mean by the, the principle of nature is that uh, it's a worthwhile thing to uncover what your nature is and then live according to that. But tricky, it's a catch-22 though, and a catch-22, it's a chicken and egg thing in a way though, because in some ways our nature um, is developing all the time and changing as a consequence. So really what it means is to stay uh, sensitive and tuned to understanding what our nature is and then living according to it. You'll live a better life if you do. My nature is to walk alone in wild places and think and to uh, uh, record the uh, result of that. That's what it is. The, uh, at least at this point. The uh, next principle is the uh, principle of, in, of temperance. It's a worthwhile, oh, oh no, social principle, social principle. Social principle says that, that's the third one, is that uh, we are social animals, that we need one another, uh, and that our best ends are social ends, are the best things we can do in life, are things that, that uh, contribute to the improvement of social welfare of our species and of the planet. So if you want a shortcut to virtue, which I'll define in the seventh, uh, seventh principle, if you want a shortcut to virtue, work for social, social improvement. So uh, the next uh, principle is the principle of temperance, which is to uh, uh, moderate our consumption, you know, of all things, eating, drinking, sleeping, playing, smoking, having sex, reading, whatever the case may be. Do it in moderation, all things in moderation. We can uh, cover up the, uh, we can cover up our lives with uh, indulgence if we like, and go through our lives consuming, uh, which indulgence is a form of consumption. Yeah, we, we can go through our lives uh, in indulging and consuming life in excess, uh, in which case we, we may not get a lot done. And, uh, our life may have really been a, a kind of a glossed over facade. It's much better than to, uh, to, to control ourselves. Also, uh, uh, excuse me, also uh, uh, moderation is a shortcut to virtue. The moment that we exercise our will to contain our, uh, our passions, to contain our, our appetites, which appetites aren't just a type of passion, lust, hunger, Ex uh, excess enthusiasm, all of these things are a passion of sort. Uh, when we indulge those, we, uh, uh, we are immediately taking ourselves away from uh, self-control and exercising uh, uh, a form of consumption. But when we can control ourselves, we are um, taking a willful power, or taking, using our willful minds to uh, maintain control. And there's that, that, that is a virtuous act, even if the results are, uh, are, are nothing more than that very thing. So it's a good thing, because you'll become a stronger, uh, more uh, deliberate person in the process. So uh, that's the, the uh, exercise of temperance. The next principle is the fifth principle, that is the uh, path of wildness. And the path of wildness is a code word that I use to describe the, an observation that the universe doesn't seem to care about us. The universe is out there, great uh, machinery of sorts, churning away at its uh, at its business of gravity wells and energy conversions and solar uh, uh, hydro th thermonuclear tra transactions activities, and there doesn't seem to be any. There's no evidence of any mind or will or 
oversight or God in any of that. Even the things that we described as laws are really simply descriptions. They're not really laws. They're not proscriptive. They are descriptive of a universe as we see it. So any hope for a God out there seems to be wishful thinking. God is not making his or her or itself evident to anybody. If you think that uh, God is talking to you in some way, you're probably talking to yourself. It's uh, wishful thinking to uh, disguise and mask over the, uh, the, the fact of, uh, of indifference. So the great indifference is that recognition that we're pretty much on our own. If you uh, want love, compassion, tenderness, concern, and uh, comfort, look to your neighbors. Coming back to the social principle. It may be your pets, mostly dogs. The next principle is the principle of reason, which is the governing faculty, the uh, force by which we uh, uh, look at the facts of the world, construct uh, arguments that uh, are formed of uh, uh, premises that support a conclusion that can be used then to make predictions about how the world operates. And when those predictions uh, yield truth, when the predictions yield positive results, then we have some reaffirmation that uh, our arguments are true. One of the uh, great weaknesses that we have as human beings is that we run around, especially in this modern internet age, where with memes, we run around uh, expressing memes and conclusions, which are the blunt end of an argument, without any supporting uh, uh, argument, without any, without the supporting argument, or even the facts that lead up to it. Our facts are our feelings, uh, which are ineffective. They are insub insubstantial in terms of, uh, as, as facts. And as a result, uh, the world is not bettered in that way. It is uh, further through um, uh, the act of, <laughs> it is furthered rather through uh, prejudice and uh, emotion rather than uh, reason. Sorry, a little congestion here on the freeway. The uh, final principle is the, is the principle of, uh, of virtue, which is the gov which is the uh, uh, purpose of life. And virtue is nothing more than the goodness that results from uh, actions which are contribute to the furthering of uh, social well-being. Always cautious that these these are not pursued at the at the expense of uh, individual rights, well, individual rights and uh, liberties. So, to have a good virtuous, to live a good virtuous life, you need to begin with. Um, a, 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 you, you need to begin with a foundation of <coughs> individual human rights. Remember, we always want to protect the weaker elements of our society, including individuals, from the uh, will of the, of the many. Uh, mob rule or, uh, or, or you know, majority rule is fine. Not mob rule is not fine, but the majority rule is fine as long as uh, it can't be used to, uh, to uh, subject or uh, perform, uh, un, you know, to, to infringe upon the rights of individuals. Uh, the example I like to use is the case of uh, euthanasia for the purpose of or harvesting organs. What if, for example, we decided that uh, every uh, 10,000 individual would be uh, euthanized and their organs harvested, 10,000 healthy individuals would be euthanized and their organs harvested to give out to uh, those who needed them. They give the heart to this person, a lung over here, a couple eyes over here. It's a morbid thought, but for, if we were simply looking for gross or net uh, social welfare, lifting of this of, of social of social social welfare, then that would be a good thing, right? But we all know we you know that that's that's not the right that's not a right that's not a good thing because it infringes it infringes upon the uh, rights of the individuals. So we need to have a good foundation of of social of individual rights similar to something like the uh, Magna Carta, things like the Federalist Papers, Virginia, the U.S. Bill of Rights, part of the Constitution. These things, these great documents all seem to uh, recognize that that needs to be a foundation, protecting the individual. So virtue then, I'm long-winded, virtue is 
comes about when a life lived in a pursuit of improved, so, improved social welfare, not at the expense of the rights of, of the individual. So virtue occurs with a man or woman who lives their life with an understanding that we're just made of bits and pieces that are changing, transforming, and will soon be gone, moved into something else. That we, uh, our, our, our best life is a life lived according to our nature and recognition of human nature. That our best ends are social ends. That uh, the exercise of temperance is a virtue in of itself. The, uh, um, the, uh, the great indifference is out there yawning at us with the dead eyes of indifference, even though that's, even that's a flattery. And uh, the, the reason is the great arbiter of truth. And there you go, the path of wildness meditation for uh, this day. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.